Hey everyone, Richard here, and today we're going to look at the Corrosive Sludge Pump, the fourth and final weapon added in the Rival Incursion update. The Sludge Pump works in a similar concept to the other driller weapons, being effective at dealing with waves and slowing and debuffing enemies in its wake. Its major differentiations from the other driller primaries include its heavy focus on slowing enemies and its unique damage over time effect causing corrosive damage. In addition, the weapon also uses a unique charge mechanic, either firing a single fragment of sludge or a large blast containing multiple fragments but consuming more ammunition. This is done by either tapping the fire button to fire one fragment or holding down the fire button to charge up its attack. Corrosive damage compared to other elemental damage types is not affected by biome and deals bonus damage to Quaronar, Mactera, and Rival Tech. Unfortunately, all these targets also happen to be rather elusive, making actually connecting a shot more challenging considering the pump's slow projectile speed. Direct damage for the pump comes in at 25, however a fully charged attack will also deal 50 area damage. While these values are not high enough to kill most basic enemies other than swarmers and shockers, the damage combined with the corrosive DOT is more than enough to kill grunts. Each charge shot will have by default 8 fragments that will split off upon impact with the environment or an enemy. A fully charged shot, however, will only consume 5 ammunition. Each fragment will deal 5 damage to any enemy struck by it. Again, this is enough to kill an enemy outright, but it will clear up swarmers and shockers and at the very least apply damage over time. The puddles formed from each fragment will last 12 seconds by default, providing a fair amount of time for area denial. This paired with its slowdown effect can make it useful for covering a retreat. The magazine size for the pump is 25, giving you up to 5 charge shots by default per magazine. In my use with the pump, magazine size was almost never an issue. Considering how bulky the sludge pump is, its reload speed is fairly snappy at 3 seconds to complete. Again, all things considered, and with a couple dozen hours of using it, reloads were never a major concern for me when using the sludge pump. Finally, reserve ammo is also generous enough at 100 spare units of corrosive fluid. With deliberate use and using your secondary for lone enemies, 100 rounds should be more than enough to keep you ammo efficient. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the pump works and the stats behind the scenes, we can now discuss builds. As usual, I like to set the tone of our build first by selecting our overclock, then using upgrades to complement the positive traits or sometimes mitigate its downsides. For our first build, we'll be using the Goo Bomber Special, creating a line of sludge from the point of firing to the point of impact. You will also get a 33% longer fragment puddle duration and increased fragment count on using the charge shot. The only major downside is that the sludge will not explode into fragments upon impact. In Tier 1, we will use air sensitive compound, providing larger puddles, allowing you to drench more area in corrosive sludge. The other upgrades in this tier are of marginal utility in my opinion, as your magazine size is already large enough and you aren't generally trying to hit moving targets so the increased projectile speed is of limited use. Next I recommend the Atomizer Nozzle as it will create even more fragments when using a charged up shot. This will make your Goo Bomber lines much denser, dealing more damage and affecting more enemies. At tier 3 we will opt for more canisters, increasing our total ammo supply by 50% making us less dependent on resupply pods. This allows for more liberal use of the goo pump and generally makes the weapon a lot more fun to use. For the fourth tier, I would say both options are viable. The spillback extension reduces charged ammo cost by 20%, giving you at max a theoretical 25% ammo boost. Improved spooling mechanism on the other hand makes firing charge shots much easier and makes you overall much more reactive to enemies. For the final tier, we have essentially three options, increased slowdown, increased damage over time, and the ability to melt armor. In all honesty, I think armor breaking as a general rule for an upgrade is sort of crap, so I would avoid using it in this case. Personally, I think leaning into the slowdown ability of the sludge pump is the better option since it's one of the strongest selling points of this weapon. Overall, this loadout works best at slowing down and slowly eating away at waves and preventing larger enemies from quickly closing in on your team. It works best in large open areas, corridors, and tunnels that can allow the long reach of the bomber special to be most effective. Our next build revolves around the Disperser Compound Overclock, greatly increasing the number of fragments from a charge shot and the amount of damage from each fragment. This comes at the cost of area damage dealt by a charge shot. 
This build works in a similar way to the Goo Bomber special, in that it attempts to go for area saturation. The method of dispersion is just a little bit different in this case. For upgrades, thanks to the similarity to the first build, it has identical recommendations and for very similar reasons. One small difference is that I would grant fluoroantimonic acid as a reasonable substitute for protein disruption mix in tier 5. The main reason I say this is that you can generally damage over time groups of enemies a bit more effectively with the Disperser compound versus the Bomber special. Some important considerations with these builds are that first you should try to use the charge shot whenever feasible. Not only is it more efficient ammo-wise, but it will also deal greater damage to groups of enemies versus the same number of shots fired individually. Second, due to the large projectile size, the sludge blobs tend to clip terrain and friendlies way more often than intended, so just be mindful of that. For secondary weapons, both the options that the driller has are perfectly fine for the sludge pump, as they can both give him some long-range firepower to deal with Mactera and spitters. I know currently the big hype is the experimental plasma charger with persistent plasma, but personally I'm not a huge fan of it despite it probably being one of, if not the most effective EPC build. For grenades, I would suggest either the neurotoxin grenade if you wanted to embrace maximum crowd control, or battle axes if your team needs a bit more single target damage. The high explosive grenades, in my opinion, are not very Sigma male and are pretty lame compared to fumigating or tomahawking bugs, so I wouldn't even bother with them. For perks, if you plan on running the EPC, I would avoid using Born Ready, as the perk loses a lot of its utility considering your secondary weapon doesn't need to be reloaded. Friendly is a good substitute and is very handy considering the rather large area of effect of the sludge pump, especially with the two builds I showcased earlier. Otherwise, Shield Link, Iron Will, and Field Medic are all solid choices for active perks, although I am always partial to having Beastmaster in my loadouts. The Engineer, Gunner, and Driller all generally play close to other teammates, meaning Shield Link is always a good choice on these classes. In retrospect, all the new weapons added in this update share a similar thread that may make them a bit more challenging to use for newer players, and that is that they all require deliberate use while lacking reactivity. This is true for the Sludge Pump, with a slow projectile speed and a charge up time for its most powerful attack. This will make the first few games with the Sludge Pump challenging, and can definitely make you feel like you're playing with a handicap. However, with a bit of practice, the Sludge Pump rightfully earns a place in the Driller's arsenal as an effective and powerful primary weapon. Thank you everyone for watching, I will be taking a little break from Deep Rock Galactic specific content for a couple of videos, but join us next time when we take a look at the Dreadnought class of enemies. Until then, happy hunting.